Hey everyone, today I'll be discussing the reason why nihilism is impossible to adhere to. This may sound somewhat contradictory to the first video I did on nihilism, where I argued that nihilism is better than existentialism because it liberates you from existential dread. However, I hope to elucidate this issue whilst also showing a compatible way to maintain nihilism. Okay, so nihilism is basically impossible because life is meaningless and yet we have an inescapable tendency to give meaning to life. At best, we can think of life as being pointless in a universal sense, but it gets harder on a personal level as we are pressured, both by ourselves and society, to do something to give our life value. Now, there's an excellent quote which I'd like to share with you from J.D. Salinger's Franny and Zoe, which goes like this. I'm sick of not having the courage to be an absolute nobody. I think this perfectly sums up the impossibility of completely embracing nihilism. I mean, how is it possible to deny meaning in a world where you're constantly pressured into having to be somebody? And can anybody truly commit to nihilism without going insane? There's only one example I'm aware of that comes close to a complete embracement of existential nihilism, and it comes from a literary source. In Parekh's Life, a user's manual, he created one of my all-time favorite characters, who plans his life in such a way as to acknowledge life's futility. So the character's name is Bartle Booth, and he's a rich person who devises a life plan that will simultaneously enable him to spend his entire fortune whilst also occupying the rest of his time alive. He does this by first allocating 10 years of his life learning to paint watercolors. After this, Bartle Booth travels around the globe for 20 years going to various ports and painting one watercolor roughly every two weeks. By the end of the 20 years, he completes 500 watercolors. Now, all during this time, he is shipping each of his watercolors after they've been completed back to his apartment in France, where he is paying a high price to a master craftsman who lives in the same building. These paintings are first glued onto a board, and then the craftsman makes difficult jigsaw puzzles out of the 500 watercolors as he individually receives them over the span of 20 years. Once Bartle Booth returns home, he then plans to spend the last 20 years of his life recreating the scenes he painted by completing the jigsaw puzzles. After each puzzle has been completed, it is then sent to be treated with a special solution to rebind the paper and to remove the wooden support from behind it, so that the painting looks like how it did before it was made into a jigsaw puzzle. After this process is complete, Bartle Booth then ships off each of the paintings to the port where it was originally painted. Each painting is then placed into a detergent solution until all the colors dissolve and the canvas turns back to its original white blank state. This blank canvas is then returned to Bartle Booth, who is meanwhile completing each of the jigsaw puzzles. Isn't that just brilliant? A 50-year plan that acknowledges life's futility and ultimately amounts to nothing. But Parekh's genius doesn't end there. Bartle Booth underestimated the skill of the craftsman as each jigsaw he was completing was progressively becoming more and more difficult, thus delaying his completion date. And what's more, in a beautiful twist of fate, Bartle Booth goes blind, which is a completely unforeseen scenario demonstrating that no matter how much you plan your life, even if you generously allow extra time for unpredictable events, everything may still not go according to plan. So yeah, this is the only true adherence to nihilism that I'm aware of. Though it still could be argued against, as some may say that Bartle Booth created meaning in the meaningless, as futility was his purpose. Now, there is another great twist at the end of Bartle Booth's tale, but I don't want to spoil it for you in case you do want to read it. So if you are interested in reading it, I'll place a link in the description below. And I'll also add his excellent book, Things, which is a must-read about the incompatibility of consumerism and happiness. So I hope I've demonstrated over the last few videos why a nihilist mentality is beneficial to overcoming existential dread, as well as why nihilists are under no obligation to kill themselves, even if they do believe life is meaningless. Now, in this video, I've demonstrated a contradictory view about the impossibility to truly embrace nihilism as a philosophy. At most, you can liberate yourself from existential suffering by acknowledging the purposelessness of life, but it's impossible to live without trying to create some kind of value. So how can we maintain nihilism whilst being cognizant of this impossibility? Well, I'd like to answer this by way of an anecdote. So I used to be a numismatist, a coin collector that is, and I had an extensive collection that I had accumulated since my childhood and from the inheritance of my deceased grandmother. Anyway, I was struggling financially and I needed the money so I had to sell it. This was the most sentimental and prized thing I owned by the way. So anyway, I was walking back with my partner after having sold it all and she saw that I was upset so she asked, why are you upset for? I thought you were a nihilist. And I stopped and said to her, I am a nihilist but I'm still fucking human. 
So in the end, we still can acknowledge the meaninglessness of life. Even if we do get upset about things or feel that we need to have some kind of value, one first needs to overcome existential dread by embracing the futility of life. And only after that are we free to create our own path and give meaning to our lives, all the while knowing that what we do is meaningless. Maybe this might be difficult for some to swallow, as they feel that they can't live without their life having meaning. But what you do can still be meaningful, subjectively speaking, just not in a general sense. Anyway, I hope I've shed some light on nihilism, and perhaps even helped you consider it as a possibility to emancipate yourself from existential dread. I've got some other videos planned in the future for nihilism about its relation to apathy and the absurd, as well as how to cope with it. So please stay tuned for those. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye now.